Welcome to our webinar today. Today we are going to cover our partner spotlight, uh, covering a great partner here at Red Canary, uh, Sentinel One. Um, but first, we have a few pieces of housekeeping that I would just want to cover. Yes, this webinar will be recorded. So I know everyone is thinking of the holiday gifts for the season. This webinar will be recorded. So please feel free to, you'll get a link right after this, um, send it to your friends, family, uh, but really glad you're here. Um, also, uh, Caitlin is in the, the audience and in the chat. And so at the end of this particular session, we're gonna go ahead and drop a link for some sweet Red Canary gear. As you can see today, I'm walk, rocking my Red Canary tuxedo. So, and I've never been so more, more comfortable. So you guys are in for a treat. But let's meet our hosts. So that's me, I'm Chris Abbey, technology partner here at Red Canary. I'm joined by a few Red uh, Canaries in the chat. We'll mention Caitlin. Caitlin will be moderating our Q&A today. She'll be sharing some helpful links. And, and if you have any questions, please drop them there. Uh, and we will have some time after the, uh, the, the session for Q&A. But without further ado, I want to introduce Troy Robbins. Troy, please take it away. Thank you, Chris, I appreciate that. Uh, just to let you know, I've been uh, with uh, Sentinel One now for uh, almost three years now. Uh, prior to that, I spent uh, 20 plus years as a security practitioner in various companies like uh, MasterCard, Nike, CenturyLink, and so forth, and uh, various roles, primarily in uh, uh, security engineering, architecture, uh, interim CISO, instant response, threat intel, and also uh, uh, reverse engineering there, and uh, so forth. So Man, again, I, thanks I, for uh, uh, having me on here today, uh, Chris. Appreciate it. What, what an awesome like uh, breadth of experience too. Like I'm, I'm tired yeah. just by thinking about your career now. Yeah, got, got the grades to show it. So. Hey, 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 we're all, <laughs> we're all getting there. So uh, today in our agenda, we're just gonna cover who we are, like who's Red Canary, who's Sentinel One. Hopefully you came through one of our websites and, and know a little bit about us, but I wanna share kind of both stories. Um, why we're better together that, you know, and then we're going to show that. So what, you know, like, why are we talking to you about the, the partnership between Sentinel One and Red Canary? And then we want to give you a sneak peek, a quick peek at a shortened demo of both the products. So let's start off. Who is Red Canary? If you came here from Sentinel One's website or, or from, you know, LinkedIn, you know, Red Canary is a security operations as a service. What that means is basically we're delivering that quality threat detection, hunting and response capabilities through technology, but really driven by that human element here at Red Canary. We ally with your teams to help you focus, give you give your teams breaks, and increase your, basically your operational efficiency. And we're not solely looking at alerts, but we're generating these detections through that rich telemetry that we're pulling from Sentinel One. Troy, talk a little bit about Sentinel One. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, Sentinel One is actually, we were founded back in 2013. We're headquartered there in Mountain View, uh, California. We employ over a thousand uh, employees worldwide now and uh, over 6,000 customers. So really as far as what Sentinel One actually provides, as far as it's that next evolution, as far as with the detection of threats on the endpoint. Uh, you know, gone are the days as far as with legacy AV, we're now looking at, uh, and we're, don't, don't consider ourselves an AV company. We're actually a next gen, you know, endpoint protection, EPP, as well as uh, endpoint detection response uh, platform, which is now given way to our uh, you know, as far as our, our Sentinel One Singularity uh, uh, you know, XDR platform, which now takes that and extends that even further for greater holistic uh, overview of the threats. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Hey, so uh, I, I want to cover like, why are we here? Why are we better together? Well, because we're delivering through Sentinel One's exceptional, exceptional endpoint protection visibility we're delivering that expert, you know, those threats, those quality threat detections, uh, those high fidelity detections, while partnering with your team to deliver all that. Uh, we provide guidance, we provide support, which means, you know, we're going to try to buy down some of that minimum time, uh, mean time to respond, some of that dwell time. Troy will talk a little bit later on in his presentation about deep visibility, but like that proactive security through that comprehensive view of your endpoints. While Red Canary is providing all that 24 by seven security experts focus on delivering quality detections, contacts, and coverage. Um, but just like Captain Planet, all our powers combined, we supercharge <laughs> Sentinel One and, and our your team's ability to meet threats head on. So Troy, I wanna hear a little bit more about Sentinel One's capabilities. Okay, thank you, Chris. Yeah, so what, what we're actually kind of focused at, at EDR, that is really one component of what Sentinel One actually provides. But now as far as, as I was describing, as far as that evolution of the Sentinel One platform, you know, with the uh, Sentinel One Singularity XDR, that is really what uh, 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 Red Canary is actually taking advantage of. And by extending that, that provides a, a much greater holistic overview 
and allows them to enrich that data or enrich the threat information itself, uh, providing uh, greater context and awareness to the threat analyst as well as their customer in a much shorter amount of time. So that's by being very proactive from an EDR perspective um, and also being able to go back in time and looking at things retroactively from a, a threat hunting. Because uh, oftentimes the, the, the time to actually detect is going to be weeks, perhaps even months before that detection is actually uh, uh, understood or at least maybe uh, nothing malicious, but a, a potential beachhead has been established. That threat actor may be looking to come back weeks, months later. Uh, and obviously, as far as being able to, uh, you know, uh, allow the stock analyst to be able to pivot on interesting information, you know, uh, and and with uh, with Red Canary being proactive inside the uh, the Sentinel platform as well, but looking across the board as far as those threats that may attack specific verticals, they can actually spot uh, with the holistic over overview that they actually have with the multitude of customers that they service, they're able to leverage those those threats and search. You know, because uh, we are actually integrated as far as with the, you know, the matter attack framework. So even those techniques and tactics that allow us to actually communicate effectively as, as security analysts, they're able to search for very specific uh, events within uh, our EDR platform. Uh, and then also too, as far as with our EDR platform, you can actually take proactive response directly from the EDR results uh, themselves. Uh, and by default, um, you know, uh, now from an MSSP uh, world, we actually have a default of 30 days, uh, you know, data storage, uh, and that can be expanded up to 365. Uh, now, as far as with any sort of instance that are actually being detected as a malicious threat, that's automatically retained for a full year. Uh, and then also as far as with uh, Intel-driven, uh, you know, hunting packs, and that's released as far as in combination then with, with Red Canary, as well as uh, Sentinel-1's research and development team they can actually push that out and we can be very proactive, enabling our customers you know, to be more effective across the board. Uh, you can easily kind of uh, switch into kind of a root cause analysis based upon the uh, ability to pivot across the different uh, data points. All right, thank you, Chris. And this, the, with the minor attack uh, evaluations, I'm not sure if anyone has actually had a chance to actually take a look at that, but uh, you know, I would encourage you to actually take a look at the uh, uh, testing that actually took place earlier this year. Uh, you know, especially with the Fin7, Carbon Act, uh, looking at that because there is actually where, uh, you know, Sentinel one had zero misses across the board. We also had uh, the most, uh, you know, uh, detections in, you know, two years running. Uh, we also had zero configuration changes. That's, that's key. That's important because your, your uh, threat actor is not going to be uh, polite and courteous and actually say, hey, by the way, I just want to let you know this Friday I'm going to be launching an attack. So therefore, kind of be ready and be on your guard. And then allowing you time to actually change your configuration to be able to, aha, we caught you. In my eyes, those are more or less mulligans. So if you end up playing a game uh, with threat actors and you have multiple mulligans, that's actually extreme risk uh, to your organization. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I'm very uh, uh, low tolerance on risk. And so that's where, as far as with the Sentinel One platform, that is going to take advantage of using AI-driven machine learning uh, augments the, the abilities from a static AI perspective, as well as uh, a behavioral analysis, too. All right. Thank you, Chris. Great. So now this is what I call the so what slide. So what does that mean for my organization? Well, in this particular slide, we modeled this after a customer of the similar size. So we, we, we identify that 20K endpoints. And so the slide really represents that return on value that you'll see with Red Canary and Sentinel-1. By consuming that 36 billion uh, pieces of raw telemetry, we're combining technology to identify those suspicious behaviors or investigative leads. That is shipped through our engine, pulling our experts to work, correlating activities, and bringing you these confirmed threats. Now, out of those confirmed threats, in this case, we're able to ship to the customer 23 high severity events. These events would wake folks up at night and require some action on a defender's part. Also, this is a one month snapshot. As you can see in the red, that's kind of a human element and the black, that is their technology element. So a true ally, when you become a Red Canary customer, we partner with you through the whole initial purchase, onboarding and the life of your account. Uh, we want you to ensure you have the best experience deploying your solution, making recommendations and supporting your teams to the extension as an extension of your organization. You'll see later as I, we talk about our platform, it's chock full of content, knowledge and, and really our homework which is created to inform, educate, and really level up your operations. As also our team of incident handlers are experienced working around the clock uh, to ensure that when something goes bump in the night, your team is aware. We've also incorporated, you know, with automation in, in our Red Canary platform, some ways to notify and take specific actions to buy down any of that dwell time. 
So now where everyone's kind of coming to see is, is this demo. And so I'm going to go stop sharing and I'm going to share it out with Troy. Troy, I will stop now and take it away. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let me get. Uh... Can you see my screen? Okay. It looks great. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So what we're actually uh, here, let's look over here at the dashboard here. This is actually the Sunday one dashboard. Uh, now this is uh, with with uh, with integration then into uh, the Red Canary platform. I mean, oftentimes that it's not even necessary to even log in to the Sentinel One platform here. But I just want to kind of show you as far as with, with the richness here, as far as with this, as far as with you know the, the customized dashboard. Each analyst that has access to the platform here has the ability then to actually modify and customize this to to really the nth degree. Uh, they can look at uh, you know all the different widgets and so forth, the different kind of representation of different data points. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we're really kind of focused here as far as with uh, deep visibility. But first, we're going to take a look at an instance that we actually populated here this morning. Now, there's a lot of instance here, but this is obviously a demo environment. But we can look at this specifically, kind of drill into, as you can see, it's with the multi-tenancy arrangement here as far as, you know, from the account down to the site, down to a specific group. So we can look at a specific um, endpoint right here. So this is actually workstation number one sitting in. The desktop group. Now, each one of the policies in each one of the you know accounts, sites, groups, they can all be uh, be be different. So now, what I did here, as far as on this desktop uh, group on the policy itself here, just to make it more exciting, I actually had it just in detect only mode. So what this actually does is is uh, allows you know the monitoring of a threat, but it also does not prevent it. So once we actually go into protect mode, you'll notice right here that we actually have by you know dynamically we're going to have killing quarantine by default. We can also have the automated remediation as well as automated rollback. So now this does only pertain to the Windows platform as we do leverage the, uh, the Windows shadow copy, uh, but we also do uh, provide a protection mechanism around that because obviously we know the threat actor is gonna be going after the shadow copy to destroy that. So, but again, let's, uh, you know, obviously to make it more exciting, otherwise it's a very short demo. So uh, in this case, what I did, let's take a look at the, the instance here. Uh, so we can look at the specific one here that has actually occurred here earlier this morning on the 9th. So now there's actually multiple threats that are kind of grouped here together because they are a single type of threat that more or less unfolded. So you're not going to be overburdened as far as with, uh, you know, just, just numerous different events or, or alert notifications and just, and just all the, uh, the instance may actually get uh, lost in the shuffle, right? So in this case, since it is related, you're going to see as far as well, this was actually dropped on the machine. This was actually then, you know, say renamed or moved and so forth like that. But it's all going to be related to, say, that, that incident itself. So we can see here now the, the most interesting one right here, because it looks like it look, looks like this threat actor was actually trying to run this multiple times. And here we see where he was actually successful. But we see that um, as we can look at the details of the threat itself, we can see that uh, now this is this is really where, you know, Red Canary is going to be able to provide that greater context and, and uh relevance there as far as you know enriching this threat data and communicating this then to the customer as well uh, too. So we can see as far as the multiple indicators and these are related then to the techniques and tactics as associated then to MITRE by clicking on each one of these you can actually go into the MITRE website. So it, it really helps the analyst you know to gain better context and understanding what was what was uh, you know involved with the threat itself. Uh, then you can also kind of freely add notes to this here we can actually see that you know, compromised creds were actually allowed to actually drop the payload. Now, this is actually an analyst, internal analyst, as far as making that note, uh, obviously myself. And then we can see as far as now, this is going to be referred to as an HR case file because we understand that this was an insider threat that more or less uh, potentially his last day, right? So here, what we can actually see as far as when we've actually first seen the threat and when we've last seen. So now this is interesting too, as far as, uh, now this is going to give you some information on the threat itself. Let's take a look at the SHA-1. So this is what I kind of refer to as like triage 101. So if we actually just took a look at that uh, hash, let's see if we actually see it. So it does not even exist in, in uh, uh, you know, virus total there. So again, that kind of, you know, uh, showcases as far as we are not dependent upon signatures whatsoever. We do have a curated threat intel that if you are uh, uh, connected to the, uh, to the internet and communicating to the Sentinel-1 uh, cloud, we will take a look at our curated threat intel which we can really kind of spot that, uh, that low hanging fruit and eliminate that because it's at uh, least computational uh, uh, resource intensive at, at, uh, at all. So, um, but in this case right here, what we could see is this was actually a static AI detection because this is where a static AI is going to analyze 
the file structure itself, looking at the file imports, exports, and, and, and that overall construction, because a lot of commodity malware can actually just be removed and, and identified immediately through that, which in this case it did. But what we see here is actually the detection type was dynamic. So what, what gives on that? So that's really where the end user decides that he knew best and actually went ahead and executed it. And that's where we end up seeing, well, since he knew best, he actually ended up uh, you know, basically encrypt, in, encrypting his box because what we could see right here is for his Sentinel-1 after the box was actually encrypted. And you know, in, in previous years, this would have been actually say, it's rendered useless. And now we have to go grab the box, re-image it. That's no longer the case with Sentinel-1. Uh, in this case right here, what we can see is actually, this gives us a scorecard as far as how we actually remediated that threat. Now this threat was long gone, That's, this box was destroyed, uh, you know, because we actually see as far as remediation, you know, over 4,000 files or modifications to the system was actually uh, uh, remediated. Uh, and then also um, nearly 3,800 files were actually rolled back. So this is a surgical rollback, if you think of it that way. So it's, um, so any file that may have been uh, encrypted, corrupted, or deleted as it relates to the threat itself can be rolled back on the Windows platform currently. Uh, and then obviously we see the quarantine file and you can download the CSV files. And, and this is really as far as with how, uh, so, uh, with uh, uh, you know, Red Canary, they can actually consume this with the initial CSVs and they can actually pull that together uh, with any sort of root cause analysis or instant response if that's a requirement uh, uh, with the service uh, you know, that you've actually uh, subscribed to. Uh, now, one thing here too, why do you see in uh, two different timestamps? Just want to kind of call your attention to this. Because the Sentinel-1 agent is autonomous, that's where we end up seeing as far as the agent identified the threat at this time. It reported it into the console at this time. So if we were actually disconnected from the internet, had no co uh, console connectivity, we would still be able to uh, uh, protect this machine. And actually in this case, because it was in detect only mode, the attack was successful, but we can actually still recover it in an automated fashion. So that's where you might actually see as far as if it's disconnected from the internet, no uh, console connectivity, you might see a difference in, in time there. Uh, the mitigation actions, now this was taken earlier, but now they're all grayed out because there's nothing left to mitigate, but um, you have the full capability across the board there. So here we end up seeing as far as, you know, there's endpoint details right here as well. And then we can also see as far as the, um, yeah, you know, we can actually open up the endpoint right there to get uh, the details. We can actually uh, search this on deep visibility. Uh, we can also then uh, look at the remote shell. But let's take a look at the specific threat here as it pertains then to uh, the storyline. So this storyline is important because this is uh, the storyline ID itself. You really kind of think of that as the binder to the book. And all the events associated with the attack form all the different chapters in that book. So, and that's one of the, you know, with our patent and technology here is with our active EDR, we're able to stitch all those elements together, and then you're able to effectively roll back in an automated fashion, or also even recover as far as with a, a rollback capability. So here we end up seeing as far as with the different, uh, now this is just kind of a small sampling here, but you can see as far as obviously with the file deletion and so forth, I mean, this would be very typical as far as with, with, with ransomware and so forth, a uh, multitude of different files here, obviously. Now we can actually limit that, or we could actually increase that here too. So. But I want to kind of show you this over here too, while we're looking at this. Uh, again, let's take a look at this because this actually originated down in here, but we also see, now this, this name of this file intentionally doesn't leave much to be desired, but let's go ahead and take a look at this here. So we can look at this guy. Now we see that this was actually just a static threat that was actually detected, but let's go ahead and pull this up in deep visibility see if we can learn more about this threat because obviously this is one of the earlier actions here. So we'll go ahead and pull this back. And now we actually see, Okay, of interest right here. So we actually see as far as, you know, from the Explorer right here, we also see the local user actually reaching out to specific website, actually downloading the file. Uh, and then this allows us then again, to kind of pivot into this, allowing your, your Red Canary uh, threat researches to, to really kind of dive down the, down the rabbit hole here. Uh, we can look at this right here as far as, well, we actually see it being written over here as it was requested this file, but then using the cert util, which is a common, uh, vehicle then that the threat actors can leverage, and they actually wrote it then locally at the mt.exe file. All right, uh, we also do have, just to kind of let you know here, as far as for advanced threat hunting, uh, we do have our, our uh, threat hunter, which is a Chrome plugin. Uh, this allows us to leverage as far as uh, uh, our library, um, you know, from our R&D our department. They will populate things that are 
um, a, a higher interest that is actually you know commonly out there kind of in the wild that's more uh, you know newsworthy and so forth that if you uh, you know enabling red canary their customers to actually proactively search across the board here for uh, additional threats uh, Chris, is there anything else you'd like me to kind of uh, go into there? Or do you want me to go ahead and uh, pass the ball back? No, I mean, you, you covered a lot of ground here. I mean, I, I love how how clean, how easy to navigate um, something one is. I mean, the deep visibility is just, you know, by far is, is an awesome thing to see. And, and then even the storyline, you piecing together, you know, basically the attack as, it's ha as it happened um, through that storylining is, is an amazing kind of feature. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop my share. Awesome. All right. And then Red Canary. So uh, if you are seeing my screen, Troy, let me know. Yes, I see it now. Thank you. Awesome. As you can see right from the get-go, we, we want to showcase our dashboard. Our dashboard is something that we, we really value and stuff like that. We want to honor your time. And so we made this as, as impactful as humanly possible. You can even see as an early kind of adopter, as someone who's just getting in there, we're going to welcome you to Red Canary. Uh, we're going to give you ways to kind of deploy your sensors. We're gonna help you configure maybe role management, identity management, and set up your users. We're also gonna help you kind of go through this whole process. Um, this is also done a lot through your onboarding. So you'll work with a CSM, you'll work with an incident handler, and they will step you through the process of kind of setting these things up that the best fit your organization, best fit your environment, because you are the only one that knows your environment as well. Um, we, we can come in and support you and grow along with you, but we definitely wanna be hand in hand and making sure that this is set up to the way you need it to be set up. Right up at the top, right from the get-go, we're gonna show you how many endpoints you monitor. This is a demo environment. So of course, our endpoint count is low. Um, we're gonna show you how many, how much telemetry is being generated from those endpoints, those endpoints being monitored, and how many events. And the way we kind of do events versus detections is, is kind of a, I don't know if it's a novel way, but we, we actually associate multiple events to a detection or a confirmed threat. Uh, and the reason why is these ones are not, uh, you know, detections are not always just a, they drop something and something happens. Uh, it could be a series of suspicious behavior leading up to an event. We're piecing that together behind the scenes, leveraging our, our experts at the CERT um, to go ahead and piece those, those aspects of the, uh, of a detection together. And so we want to show you, showcase that, highlight that to you right from the get-go. We do have these red tabs that kind of pop out to let you know that, hey, there is something that is, you know, warranting your attention. Here we have five current open. So if you're just kind of an analyst jumping in here or even someone from senior management, you can see right from the get-go, hey, here is, I have five open detections. I need to make some calls. I need to talk to someone, see why these things are open. Um, at the bottom, we're going to show you everything. So we want to show you the things that we're doing behind the scenes. You know, of course, we love you know, shipping great detections stuff like that, but a lot of that is done through updating detectors and uh, in, you know, investigating new in instances. Um, you know, these detectors are based upon things that are going on in the world. So it could be something like Troy mentioned in the news, newsworthy, something that's popped up. It could be something across the uh, different industry and different vertical. But what we're doing is we're creating these quality detectors that give investigative leads to our CERT, who then can then act on those particular threats in your environment. So if they see something that happened maybe at a small mom and pop, but you're a large enterprise, but they see that across that you benefit from that type of a detection happening on a Red Canary customer. So, and as you can see, we well, lots of stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Um, I want also want to show you that, hey, we also consume the endpoints. So we're leveraging API, we're leveraging that rich telemetry that we're getting from Sentinel One to showcase here's, you know, it's not necessarily a, an inventory of sorts, but this is a way for you to manage, you know, your endpoints. What am I seeing? What is out there? Um, what's not checking in? Um, when did I last see activity? Uh, you can even click on each of the search bars and find out like maybe you have, this is a demo environment, but maybe you have end of life's operating systems. So we're trying to give you as much information as you can so you can actually operate as a, as a SOC and kind of figure out what you need to do. Maybe this is a call out of this particular dashboard. This is a call to your IT ops group. Hey, we need to go ahead and pull these systems down. We need to protect those systems because you know they're operating you know, end of life software. Identities. We're pulling in those identities through API, and then we're also correlating some of those events. So you can see right here this MS uh, Edge win. You know we have confirmed threats associated to them. You can see at a glance, you know who's actually been impacted, who's part of an it maybe an investigation or a detection. And so at a glance, you can see you know oh I have some domain accounts, some system accounts. I need definitely need to jump on those. You know this particular domain account, not a system account, has a malicious software and a suspicious activity. I need to maybe freeze that uh, that's the system, uh, change the password, do something 
but we're going to try to give you as much information and that's all being stitched together behind the scenes. Um, because we talk about like bi-directional communication and how we're partnering, we also want to give you opportunities to kind of say, hey, there's some things that I run in my organization that maybe other organizations have a policy against. So what we do is we've created this application list. This is just a, a application, top application of potentially unwanted software. But as you can see, there's some, there's some software. Some people run things like, if I could type, if I can type, there you go. You can see like caffeine, like if you have a, a lobby, maybe a system that's running caffeine, maybe that's something you do want to run. You can easily at a glance, at a, at a push of a button, say, hey, I, want, I don't want to see detections related to this particular potential unwanted software. So you can do stuff like, you know, adding tags, you know, identify that host name, maybe that identity that is associated to, and some justification notes. That sends notes to our cert saying, hey, I do not want to see any sort of detections on caffeine. Please kind of suppress those, you know, this is okay in my environment in under these circumstances. We're also pulling in alert sources. So we want to make sure that this is a, a, a very powerful piece of powerful piece of your arsenal you know, as, as, a, as a security operations center or as an IT operation center. Um, but basically we want to pull in and, and bring as close as we can to a single pane of glass for you in terms of, you know, okay, what are some things that you're running in your environment? Can we consume those alerts? Can we ship those to you? Um, is it a place that you can look at? So now you can set your analysts up, you know, for success with our product, uh, with our, you know, our teams as well. Um, but taking a look at things like, you know, network, um, your, your umbrella, you know, Azure Sentinel, Splunk, Windows Defender, and everything else in the in-between. We're also correlating that to, to attack. And then as you can see, this is a really powerful kind of like, you know, showcasing and being transparent about what we do. So Red Canary, anything in green right now is, is what we have techno, uh, technique coverage for with our Red Canary detectors. You can see in here, we're also cracking those sub, sub techniques. So you can see that we're not, we're not a full coverage. We're not claiming to have full coverage. And then there's also aspects of, of the attack matrix that you may have to have other compensating controls or even technology in your stack. You know, hopefully that's, that's something that can feed into our alert sources. And then we can also provide you a little bit of a, a visibility there as well. We're also showing you those intelligence profiles. So the things that we're using to ship detections, the things that we are collecting and, and correlating and back to, back to a, an intelligence profile is available to you. So we wanna educate and we wanna give you additional context in these alerts. So here is a, is a great, a powerful tool. You can dig into it as a customer, take a look at what we have out there and then you know maybe identify things that you need to change or make uh, more available to your analysts as an educational source or anything else. So really the confirmed threats, why we're here, we're showing that, you know, basically how quickly we can kind of, you know, consume, identify and correlate all that information into a, just a really clean, uh, actionable timeline. So at the top, you can see that we have a very short information about like what the threat is, you know, it's suspicious activity. You know, we give you a sn short snippet of what is going on. Um, we're gonna provide you that endpoint and that identity showcasing like, okay, here's all the information kind of coming back together. And like, like Troy shared, we're also kind of correlating that those to the observed techniques. We're providing you those attack techniques, any detectors that fired uh, during this particular uh, detection and contributing intelligence. Where did we get this? How did we, how did we come to this conclusion? Contributing intelligence tells you right here that, hey, this is a behavior. We're seeing something that's going on on this endpoint. And, and it's, it's purely through that behavior. We're also, basing this on first party intelligence, things that we've seen in other environments that Red Canary has identified, captured, and then created a detector for. You know, we're also gonna show you, you know, again, the homework behind the scenes is, hey, there was 18 events that were associated with this detection. We're all, we're big on that communication. If you haven't, if you're, you haven't heard bi-directional communication more than once, I apologize, but we're definitely about that communication. So at the top, we want to be as, as, as accessible as you as you need us to be. So, you know, we have it up here at the top, contact us. Acknowledge just lets our team know that, hey, you are on the case and you are you're working this particular issue. Respond gives you some response actions that can be taken on demand. And I can show you a little bit of automation in the background. Uh, as you can see, this is a very clean timeline, easy to follow. 
But the big thing at the bottom I want to showcase is this is kind of a light case management. We want to definitely give you an opportunity to say, share with your teams, knowing that some teams are large, some teams are very small. But what are you doing? How are you working on this? This is this is notes purely for your team in terms of like, hey, we went ahead and go and went, grab the endpoint. We talked to the user. Those types of things can be tracked here. And just below that, we have an opportunity for you to engage your instant handler. So ask your instant handler question. This ships the, to your, the instant handling team. The instant handling team can then build additional context, maybe reach out for like a phone call to kind of educate or even talk about this. Maybe this is something that doesn't, it isn't supposed to fire or, or a, a mistake. You know, you can definitely communicate with us through here, through our email, through your connection with, with our, our CSMs. So there's definitely, definitely many ways to kind of communicate with your instant handling team. The big thing too is, we want to know, hey, did you take action? Did you remediate this particular detection? If not, here's all the re, you know rationale, reasons why you may not have taken action on it. Maybe it's an unauthorized activity, but can't be remediated. It's just something that you guys, your, your team doesn't have time to do or doesn't have something that's, you know, maybe there's some factor in your environment that we don't know about. So what we're doing is, hey, asking for information. You know, we're still going to ship that detection because it was suspicious activity. It was bad behavior. Um, but, you know, it just lets us know that, hey, we're not going to take that action on it. So please don't hit me up again on this. Um, maybe it was authorized, but non-testing activity, something that uh, an administrator is doing. Here, you can kind of provide a little additional information. Hey, this is for this particular user. They run this script every so often. I prefer not to see those detections in the, in the future. Maybe it was incorrectly identified. This definitely lights the fire under us because we want to make sure that the, the detections we're shipping to you are quality and, and have high fidelity. And so this lets us know, hey, this is a false positive and we need to talk. Um, and that puts our CERT team, that puts our, our instant handling team kind of to work to figure out like, okay, did we ship this uh, as a false positive? Is there ways that we can improve our detectors? So really it's that kind of learning together and growing together. And then lastly, this is testing. Hey, I, this is an internal external test. Um, we're testing this particular, you know, this particular program, you know, thanks for shipping us the detection, but we're on it. We're not going to remediate it. And we just wanted to see what this does. Lastly, I just wanted to showcase, we do have some automation triggers as well. Uh, I know Troy talked a little bit about some of the things you can do within Sentinel-1. Leveraging the API, we're, we're doing some similar things too with Red Canary. So layering that, that level of automation that you get with Sentinel-1, you can also layer on automation with Red Canary. You can see up at the top here, we have things like notifications. So maybe you're reaching and using Slack. Uh, maybe you want your team to be contacted through SMS or voice. This is a way for you to kind of go ahead and say, hey, when this particular detection fires, I want this particular trigger. I want to be notified by Slack, by, by SMS, by a voice. And then we can take containment actions. So stuff like banning hashes, banning IPs, um, isolating the system until you can get to work. Just really trying to buy down and, 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 and kind of squash some of that dwell time. But that is all I have. Troy, did I cover everything? Is there anything else you think I should cover? If not, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. It does help if you're off mute. But um, <laughs> no, I'm just going to say, I, I thought that was a really good job. I just want to kind of emphasize as far as like where you're talking about that automation. I mean, that, that's really kind of that culmination as far as really looking at XDR across the board. Um, I, think that's, uh, I think that's huge, you know, just to, as far as being able to look at everything holistically and understanding exactly you know, what, how, how we can share that threat intel across your entire security stack to, to, you know, safeguard all your assets. And we need to do it much more efficiently than what has been done in, in the past because it's just not sustainable. Um, you know, the advanced threats of today's world are just moving at lightning speed and it's just something where we need to move faster. And I think that's where with uh, the partnership here as far as, you know, between Red Canary, Sentinel One, as far as leveraging that automation, leveraging that XDR type of, uh, uh, you know, that platform, I think it's just, it, it's the right uh, recipe uh, across the board. Thank you. So, you know, maybe something piqued your interest. Um, we definitely want to share some resources. So we do have, uh, maybe you want to learn a little bit more about our partnership. So, you know, check out the link below in terms of redcanary.com slash Sentinel one, learn more about our partnership and why we are really better together. Um, we also have a data sheet on the, the, the MDR uh, for Red Sentinel one, uh, but maybe we went well past peaking your interest. You want a demo. Well, we have an, a link for you as well. Um, feel free to also reach out via chat and say, hey, I want to talk to maybe someone, a salesperson in terms of getting a demo set up. Um, but we are really appreciative of all of your time. But the, the moment you've all been waiting for. Caitlin's going to drop a link in the end of the chat for that free 
sweet, sweet Red Canary t-shirt. Again, I must say, it is very top. comfortable. It is very comfortable. It's a, I think I, I used to be a customer and that was the thing I collected at every trade show was basically like, oh, where's Red Canary? Because I need a new gym shirt. I need a new sleep shirt. I need, so uh, just really great, really great gear. Awesome. Now, yeah. So Chris, that, Q. yeah, that link um, to get your t-shirt, it's a print section link. It's in the chat. Um, <clears throat> go on there. It is timed, but if it runs out, you can hit refresh, um, but definitely go in there and claim your prize and we'll ship it out to you. Um, Chris, Troy, thank you so much. It was a great session. We had a lot of questions come through, which is a great sign of how engaged um, the audience is. One question um, was, they said, if I, um, is Red Canary and Sentinel One able to provide MDR services to customers based in EMEA? The answer to that is yes. I just want to make sure I say it live on this webinar so that you, everyone is aware. Um, if it's something you're interested in, definitely follow our link um, to request a demo or chat us and we'll get you set up with our EMEA teams. Um, then they can help you walk through how to do this. All right. The next question that we had um, was, do you, uh, and I believe that this is directed at Red Canary. So do you integrate other data sources and correlate with S1 telemetry? Yes. So we're, we're working on uh, deeper integrations with some of our integration partners. So they're not necessarily full-fledged EDR telemetry partners, but we're working on uh, probably early probably mid early next year. I don't have really a, a roadmap right in front of me, but it's definitely something that to keep an eye on, especially as we start talking about these integration partners and how we're gonna work and correlate um, the things that they're throwing, the information that they're sharing um, through that external alerts that we showed during the demo. So it's definitely on the roadmap. Uh, I don't have timelines right, right now, but um, keep an eye on right here in the space uh, because I, I think it's gonna blow your socks off. <laughs> Yeah. I just want to kind of add to that, uh, Chris. I mean, uh, I mean that, that, that's a that's a great uh, great point. But I think too, as far as if there is a missing integration between, say, Red Canary and another partner, maybe that uh, you know uh, um, actual integration exists there between Sentinel One and that partner. So you're able to leverage and you know uh, Red Canary can actually consume that intel because of the XDR platform. They can consume that back into and, and actually ingest that to again, expand and enrich that based upon the instant within the Sentinel One console. So again, this is all about kind of bubbling everything up and, and really striving for that, uh, that single pane of glass that we've all been trying to get to over the years. Um, I think this is actually, you know, we're actually beginning to see that evolution take place. And one thing, if it wasn't clear to like, you no, know, right here, doesn't sit in front of, you know, we do consume telemetry from Sentinel One. You have full access to Sentinel One and that platform, all the rich things that, that uh, Troy was able to show in terms of deep visibility, some of those automation capabilities, those are available to your team. You know, we hope that we partner together with, with Red Canary's platform and really kind of offer you a, an easier solution, something that you can kind of go on. But I mean, these are deep platforms and we're definitely not gating any customers from it. So that's really awesome that, you know, there's some integrations within Sentinel One that we can, you can bolt on built in. Um, so you just wanted to make sure that was clear. Like there's, you get access to that EDR that platform as well. Awesome. And, and Chris, that actually leads way well to the next question that I just want to make sure that we address out loud. So with this offering, the user gets access to both platforms, Sentinel One and Red Canary. If the customer is the customer still able to respond to incidents in case he, she wants to. Yes. Yeah. I mean, exactly. we, we don't, we don't gate you from, there's no um, bought down uh, version or, or, or permission that you get. You, you're an admin in a particular Sentinel one uh, for your particular account or site. Um, you can take actions within Sentinel ones, leveraging, you know, the feature, the rich feature set that Sentinel one does provide as well. And so um, if something is, you know, you want to take action there, dig in deeper. Um, our instant handlers will also provide training and, and support you on that particular use case. Um, we also have, you know, Red Canary is like a turnkey solution. So for an IT organization that may be running Sentinel One, but doesn't have the time to go into depth of deep visibility and hunting and searching, it's also there for you to kind of run, set and forget um, with, a, with a team of experts behind you. Perfect. Okay, so another detailed question is, are the threat notes centralized in a single platform 
platform for analysts to use them as knowledge base or review them as case studies. So I'm assuming that is for uh, right canary, the, the threat yes. notes that we showed during the detection. It Correct. isn't. So it is. It, they are associated to each detection. They're isolated to detections. Um, the way we see analysts use those analyst notes is basically more of a kind of, hey, team, I'm working on this. Um, we don't have some sort of knowledge base builder. So if you do have a case management solution that you're using behind the scenes, I mean, that definitely would be the go-to for building out those KBs. Um, but the way we, we leverage those analyst notes uh, on the front end, what you can see is basically a way for you to inform your team, hey, I'm taking actions. Uh, on the back end, when you do stuff like uh, responding to detection, we do have a centralized note-taking um, solution that basically tells our analysts, our, our, our CERT team, hey, these are things that the customers responded to. So things that you don't want to ship to us, uh, things you don't want to be shipped as a detection, um, things that are allowed in your environment. So there is a rich KB in the background for our CERT team. Uh, unfortunately, not for not for you, but definitely if it's a, it's a, if it's a feature that you'd want. I mean, um, right here has been always pretty good about like, you know, responding and, and, and taking in those feature requests. Awesome. Um, speaking of feature requests and probably a follow-up to us analyzing, Red Canary being us analyzing other data sources, uh, we got the direct question, is anything in the works to protect email and possibly other SaaS apps? Okay, do you want me to take that, Chris? Or is yeah, that, go uh, ahead, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so, um, with other SaaS apps, I mean, there, there's always this integration, that, especially since uh, with Sentinel One, we, we do totally expose our API right out of the gate uh, for customers to actually consume and leverage. And because it was built from the ground up and we do, we are API centric. So we build our API first and then we build the UI around that. It makes it super easy for your developers as far as to begin that integration with any other apps. If we haven't already built that out into the Singularity Marketplace. So, and the Singularity Marketplace, just think of that as really kind of your, your uh, you know, a, a hub for connection to other platforms that we, uh, you know, actually that integration has been built out. There's going to be more announced in, in the coming months as far as with additional integrations. That makes it super easy. So if you have an account with company XYZ that uh, you just wanted that integration with Sunday One, which then Red Canary can actually consume that data that's populated within that instant then as well too, which may key off on additional indicators that they have to, again, further enrich the threat. So uh, that's all you know, automated, obviously, through the Singularity Marketplace. But again, we're not going to limit your imagination because we do, like I was saying, as far as fully expose that API to you. And for my um, piece, I'll yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. I, I was just going to say, as far as uh, email, I want to make sure I don't leave that out there on the table. We don't have anything natively, but I guess as far as, uh, you know, there are some built-in kind of, you know, uh, uh, initial analysis that you can leverage as far as from that initial or that uh, the platform pro provider, but the real danger comes when you actually get that, that uh, say any sort of uh, uh, payload down on that endpoint. And that's where any of the, you know, most uh, of all your other detections are not going to pick up anything from a static perspective uh, because it's, you know, with say, you know, uh, with the advanced persistent threats or something that's polymorphic that all, always is dynamic, you know, through any sort of email phishing, it's, it's useless as far as look at anything from a signature perspective, which is why the Sentinel One solution is, you know, really signature less. We're looking at everything from, you know, the, the AI, which is augmented with machine learning on both the static and behavioral side. Um, go ahead, go ahead, Chris. Do you have anything for? Oh, to I was I was going to give a non-answer because I, I don't know if I uh, what I can speak to. So, um, but definitely to keep in touch and keep uh, keep aware of uh, Red Canary and what we're doing in the space. I do know that um, our our team of experts and, and behind the scenes are are working on different integrations. Um, email has come up, and so um, but. There's not much I can release now or, or say just because I'm not in the know. So, um, but yeah, definitely keeping keep an eye on the space and keep an eye on Red Canary as well. Yep. Great answers, guys. Um, Troy, I wanted to give you a shout out just because it came up um, during your presentation. We had someone say, I use the Chrome plugin and deep visibility every day. Game changer. So always love hey, good. to hear. Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah love to hear positive awesome. feedback. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then it's a good segue to kind of just because you're going to laugh, Troy, we've talked about this and you're going to think it's a seed question, but it's not. This, this came in live. Um, okay. They said, everyone seems to claim success in the MITRE evaluations. Semantic, oh. 
you know, certain vendors will say they scored 100%. Uh, you know, you've got quotes directly from some of these vendors saying that, you know, they've got the highest level of protection. So what is the truth? Okay. So obviously, since I work for Sentinel One, and because of your opinion that has been delivered there, you know, um, I want you to actually examine examine the the data. So as a security practitioner with 20 plus years on the other side, uh, that's that's where my headspace is still at. I always take a look at everything that comes from the vendors first with a grain of salt. But that's one of the reasons why I chose Sentinel One is because of its ability to actually perform. Uh, so before I came over here, as much as they interviewed me, I interviewed Sentinel One. So it was something I could really get behind because it was a solution. Is it perfect? No. But did it work? Yes. It worked as advertised and did it, uh, has it evolved? And, you know, since I, I said I've been here almost three years, it's not the same product that it was when I first started. It just keeps getting better. So with that, I would encourage you to take a look at the results themselves from MITRE and actually come up to the, uh, come up with a conclusion yourself. I mean, as far as actual um, uh, changes to, uh, you know, the detection logic, okay? I mean, that's right there evident within uh, the MITRE eval. I mean, they don't give you a scorecard, but you can actually create your own scorecard based upon the, the results. Keep in mind too, that some companies are really great as far as actually uh, providing telemetry data, but telemetry without any sort of correlation and, you know, you know to a technique or tactic is going to produce additional requirements on the analyst to actually come up with that data. Now, the more telemetry you have just with each event, without the correlation, pretty soon it gets into that murky, you know, uh, uh, world where you're beginning to kind of uh, assume certain things. Um, with with Sentinel One, you don't have that simply because of that active EDR. Again, by associating all the activities of a processing child processes, you know, uh, 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 DNS requests, file modifications, and so forth, it, it's all stitched together with that storyline. And it's all bound together as I was describing that storyline ID as the binder to the book. So with all those events, you could begin to unfold that. So uh, if you end up having some telemetry there, it's still embedded within the, uh, within the storyline itself. Uh, but then you're also going to see because of our integration uh, uh, with, uh, you know, modern tech techniques and tactics, it just gives the analyst much better uh, context to the actual threat. Again, allowing Red Canary to, to, as they are integrated in with the MITRE Tech framework as well, this tighter integration here just um, you know, allows them to, to provide more meaningful context about the threat, understanding what the threat uh, uh, was and how it took place and so forth, uh, and, and to be able to deliver that faster to the, to the customer um, uh, across the board. So again, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, based upon that statement there that you actually kind of initially kind of launched, I would encourage you, and matter of fact, you know, let me actually grab that link. I'll paste it here in the chat uh, because it's actually a really good link to actually uh, when you go through this. So again, this is all based upon uh, MITRE's um, eval. And then you can actually walk through this. This is actually based upon the Carbonac and uh, FIN7 testing that was done earlier. So here, let's get this going. So, and you can change that, you know, across the board with, you know, any other vendor. And if you walk through each one of those steps as it pertains to the actual test itself, you're gonna see what I'm talking about as far as where there's one thing as far as like, you know, telemetry, 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 or configuration change. Again, I, 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 I've never seen as far as where a threat, threat actor has been so courteous to actually say, hey guys, just let you know, between the hours of uh, 12 and 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm going to begin the attack, but uh, we're going to be footprinting things in the, in, in the morning, so that way it gives you a little bit better understanding of what actually is, is transpiring. Now, if you need to change your detection logic, just let us know. I, I, okay, that's fantasy land. So that, that's where I, I think if you really kind of look at that, walk through these results, you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. Some of the vendors, some of our you know, competitors out there, you're gonna see, especially those of us that have been around for a while, you're gonna see as far as some things we've always known about, where we end up seeing as far as, yeah, this is really good about scooping up all the artifacts and tossing them over the shoulder, but it leaves the analyst to have to stitch it all together. There, you're going to see some of that, which is evidenced here as far as with the data. So I'll let you take a look at and create your own scorecard, but you're going to see that that's going to jive up with um, how Sentinel One actually reviewed that as well. So yeah. thank you. I'll, I'll jump off my soapbox. No, Troy, great, great answer. <laughs> I think we chuckle because we have had some internal discussions around MITRE as well. So yes, um, <laughs> yeah, well, I think that brings us to the conclusion um, of the questions. Uh, you, I just want to thank 
um, our presenters today. You guys did a great job. I want to thank our audience. We always love when we get lots of live questions and lots of engagement. Um, this recording will be available and we'll be sending some follow up material as well. Thank Thanks, you, my guys. Thanks, Troy. All right, take Thanks, care. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.